In the darkest days of Poland's martial law, seven million citizens took to the streets of Warsaw, Poznan, Katowice, and Wrocław to greet the man who, perhaps above all others, vanquished the dark forces of communism in East Europe. Peace be with you, Poland, my homeland, proclaimed Pope John Paul II, as the faithful and the freedom fighters rose as one to cheer in streets darkened by the brutality and murder of Poland's military dictatorship. In the village of Mount St. Anne, famed for its Calvary Hill sanctuary, he assured the crowds, together with all my countrymen, especially those who most painfully feel the taste of disappointment, humiliation, suffering, deprivation of liberty, harm, trampled human dignity, I stand under the cross. The Pope also held a turbulent meeting with Poland's Prime Minister, General Jaroszewski, requesting that he listen to the libertarian voices of the Solidarity Trade Union. The noble-born Jaroszewski told the Pope, the son of a seamstress and a soldier, that the Church had no business interfering in Poland's politics, and ever fearful of a full-scale Soviet invasion, the brutalization and murder of Polish freedom fighters continued for years as Jaroszewski fought to appease his Soviet overlords, who held the reins over Eastern Europe. The road to freedom was long, but it was in Poland that the workers and the faithful formed a united front that gradually led to the disintegration of a fearful, violent, and godless dictatorship. Thirty years after those events of 1983, and long after Soviet power had evaporated, Pope John Paul II's promise that he had come for all Poles came true. General Jaruzelski, the dictator whose regime had once brutalized the freedom fighters, asked a priest for the last rites on his deathbed and received a Catholic funeral, a final victory for the faith which was instrumental in freeing Poland and all Eastern Europe from the grips of communist dictatorship.